crack is cracking. I'm out here in the UK. I'm straight out of Compton Tour, man. Much love. And you know you rocking with, man. It's a little easy to email me about that online. So we finna get it cracking, man. So, yeah, they have all these statistics that highlight how all the risks for black people are elevated, mm -hmm. but we have nobody explaining why. So that's where there's this mistrust. Wait, why are you saying that I, you know, you're, you're looking at me and you're saying that just because I'm black, I'm going to need a high blood pressure pill. Well, that doesn't make sense. You know, well, we're not explaining why some of these uh, things are disproportionate. Okay. The other thing is the darker your skin is, the higher your need for vitamin D because mm -hmm. you're not going to absorb it as well. We don't get enough sun exposure in many of the countries where black people are living. Uh, if if they were still in sunny areas, they wouldn't have that issue. But now they're living in areas with all these fair skin people. Mm -hmm. So they need to supplement with vitamin D. And it's, it's not just a vitamin, it's a pro hormone. It triggers everything else in your body. So if your D is low, nothing else is going to work properly. No. Um, anyways, so there are lots of reasons why. And I feel like in medicine, we just have gotten so used to just prescribing a drug and not really explaining or educating people on why or how their body works. Okay, well, can, can, you mind, can I ask a quick question, if you mind? Uh, yes. Some, someone, asked, someone asked me, I'm skinny. And why do I have sleep apnea? Because sleep apnea is for fat people. Interesting. Yeah, you know, I, I was in a, a traveling one time with a group of people and I said, I lecture on sleep and sleep apnea, sleep disorders. And the lady said, oh, I went to one of those tests. They said, I stopped breathing 53 times. Damn. I said, oh my God. That's severe. Our, yeah, I go, are you wearing a CPAP? And she said, no. I go, why not? Uh, I am not that old and I'm not that fat. Wow. And so she was offended by that because in her mind, there was a picture of what a patient with sleep apnea looks like. Okay. And we've done that in the media. Okay. We've painted a picture in the media of truck drivers or obese people as the ones that have the issues. Okay. Children can have sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. Teenagers have sleep apnea. Anybody can have sleep apnea because there's so many mechanisms involved. If we're talking about the size of our, our neck, this is a great topic, especially for your group, okay? Because the size of our neck does correlate with our risk for sleep apnea. So you have some of these athletes who have just pumped out and they've just got their neck, you know, so broad and they're so proud of that. But I guarantee you when they go to sleep at night, they're not breathing properly because the muscle you see on the outside, you're also going to have that muscle on the inside. And then you go and do a workout and you engorge those muscles with blood. You know, you're pumping iron, you're pumping yep. iron, you're getting those muscles built up. There's research that shows they will sleep terrible um, mm -hmm. after that. The same is true for fat, for, for uh, weight gain that happens. It's also true for fluid accumulation and inflammation. Mm -hmm. So we know that. Where we have more of a difficulty uh, understanding it is when we see the skinny people. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at now is the anatomical size of the neck and the, the correlating size of the airway that goes through that neck. And for many people, their airway is the size of a straw, wow. right? It's the size of a straw. If you have these really tiny people with these anatomically skinny necks, they don't have much of an airway. And the other thing that we look at is the measurement, okay? So if you take somebody from the side profile, you're looking at the measurement, let's say from their ear to the back of their head, mm -hmm. and then you're gonna look from the ear to the front. And what you wanna see is that there's a good broad expanse there to allow room for mm -hmm. a nice wide airway. Mm -hmm. When that area is tiny and compressed, you have to think of the underlying structure, it's going to be tiny. Mm -hmm. So now you take somebody who's skinny, maybe you're looking at um, hormones. So progesterone is really good for sleep, estrogen, not so much. Our, our culture, we have estrogen dominance, so yeah. that can trigger people. Uh, women around their period might have some issues with sleep. I mean, there's lots of factors. So 
when I say that, you know, sleep, I can paint out the picture for you of sleep. I can draw what it looks like. Yeah. But it's just like, um, it's just like diet in the sense of you and I could eat the same food. I could react differently to it than you do. Right. Mm. I might have more acid in my stomach. You might have less. I might have an intolerance to gluten or lactose. You know, you might be fine with cheese, for example. So when it comes to sleep, we know what the structure looks like and what is supposed to take place. But then there are all these variables that people bring to the table that in just talking with somebody, they'll paint the picture and you'll be able to see really quickly what's wrong with your sleep, able to why it's see. not working. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's one of the great things about this conversation. You've definitely helped um, identify a lot of different, you know, parameters extern externally that um, add to people getting um, different forms of sleep and just the different ways that the function goes throughout it. Um, you spoke about vitamin D sort of deficiency slightly as a maybe as an adverse sort of effect. Um, do you think there's any correlation within like having maybe like low iron and um, do you think it could affect like maybe people's uh, fibroids and stuff like that too? Because sometimes mm -hmm. we see people have those issues and they say there's some correlation with just them sleeping as well. So um, iron, so when we see, when, our, when I'm checking somebody for their sleep, we do blood work. We're always gonna do the vitamin D, vitamin B12, and we're going to do iron studies to look at. Um, we have to look at a couple things. One, do they have the right levels that they need to have energy through the day? Because it's a 24 hour cycle we're talking about. You have to have enough energy through the day in order to sleep well at night. If your iron is low and you're dragging, what we're going to see is changes in your sleep and we it's correlated also with restless leg syndrome. So people who have this uncomfortable feeling in their legs, cramps, all of those types of things, we'll see that in um, a low level of iron. What about, oops. Oh, no, so okay. I was going to say, what about people who, who bounce and shake their leg repetitively? Yeah, exactly. exactly. I do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Those muscles are firing and, and what will happen over time is the joint that correlates to it, you might start to get some inflammation in those joints. So you might start to have pain in your knee, okay. you know, your knees or your hips, right? Because mm -hmm. if there is no time when those muscles can actually just be paralyzed and repair, mm -hmm. then you'll start to get damage. Um, yes. So, and then the other, you mentioned about fibroids and yeah. things like that. Yes. So for women, there's lots of issues because estrogen dominance can lead to fibroids. Fibroids can suck up all the blood in your uterus and then your iron drops and then you have problems sleeping. You have bone pain, aches. It can be really uncomfortable for women and that disrupts your sleep and the cycle just gets worse. And, and we could end up with diagnosis of chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia. All of those are descriptions of the symptoms that people are experiencing. They're not getting to the root cause of why it's happening in the first place. Peace family, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and check us out on bout.online.com. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook for exclusive playlists and social media for all different types of segments and content.